This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Bezat Hashem. I wanted to to share some thoughts that I had today. We're saying usually that the main thing is the will. And also it's written and There is nothing that can stop you when you want to achieve something when you want. So I heard once a certain question of a person he asked, he said, How can you tell me that nothing can stop me if I want? Let's say that now a person is in prison and he wants, for an example, to see his family, he wants to put fill in, and they don't let him. He's, he's trapped, he's closed in that prison. You can open the curtain if you want. So, thank you. So, if you want something, you can want as much as you want. It's not going to bring you out from prison. You, you, you want to see your family and you have another five years to stay over there and nothing can change it. So I read an explanation on that that said that the real meaning of that sentence and the vara omed nothing can stop you from wanting. Even if, let's say, for an example, someone will tell you, no, you can't do this, you cannot do that, he cannot force you not to want that thing. For an example, even the halakha, the Jewish rule is saying that if they're forcing you to worship idols, and they're threatening on your life to kill you, and if you're not going to bow to that statue or whatever, they're going to kill you, so... The Jewish rule is allowing you to bow, but not to believe in that bowing. Not to think that really now you are a believer of that idol. Just to save your life because the risk is so crazy. So now you are allowed to do something even though that you're not really, because that you're not really doing it, because your heart is somewhere else. So even if they are forcing you to say, I do believe in something that you don't believe, still in your heart you can say, no, 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 I don't believe in that. The only reason I'm saying it against my will is because that I don't want to die, because I'm not allowed to die, because I have my family to take care of, and I cannot let them stay alone without me, and whatever. So there is nothing that can stop you from wanting something. Now, that's the simple explanation, and it's huge, it's great, it's amazing. But... I rather to go back to to the first one that we found ourselves stuck in a wall with it. That that person is stuck in prison and now he wants to visit his family and he cannot because he's trapped for at least another five years over there and now what can he do? So I want to explain to you something that I realized about my life, something very deep and very meaningful and very important. Something that gives me the strength and the power to overpower many, many difficulties and challenges that I'm facing in my lifetime. And, and I will say something before to, to explain why why I'm finding it important to share with my thoughts and to explain my understanding because like millions of people are understanding things on a daily basis and they can hold a camera and speak and if someone will enjoy hearing them they can speak in public and whatever it's okay to do it but I wouldn't recommend to go to every speech of every person but I would recommend to come and to listen mine so why? Because a person really can never know if he is right or not. You can never know. Now someone offered to you to go and, and, and work some, in some place and you're looking for a job. And okay, it looks good and they, they're paying good and the hours are fine. But you have some 
<coughs> good reasons why to choose that job and you also have some reason why not to. And then there's another person that is offering to you another job that also got some lackings and also some, some qualities, some good reasons why to take that job. And now you don't know what to do. And you're choosing one. And you don't know if you chose the right one or maybe you were supposed to choose the second. And you don't know what to do with yourself because you don't know if you're going in the right path. So what can you do to know in which way to walk in if you have two options? That is a huge question, maybe the biggest question of them all, that the answer to that question is the answer to the secret of the free choice of the person, Soda Bechira that there is nothing greater and bigger and, and the more than that. We're the only species, we're the only kind of creations that got that power of free choice and we're able to choose. Animals cannot choose. They have a desire and they're following this, their desire. If now fear came, so now fear is overpowering their way of thinking, their mindset, and they're going with that fear. And they're just being led by their emotions. But we, as human beings, as people, we have the ability to choose against our desires. Oh yeah, I want that, but I cannot. I'm not allowing myself to do that. And I have that power as a creation. So to know how to choose, and on that Hashem is saying, telling us, you need to choose life. We need to choose life and we have the ability to choose life, spiritual life and physical life. This is the only, the highest thing that's been given to us, to human beings. So the answer on the free choice, it's the highest answer of them all. So now, going back, how you gonna know which of those two options are the right way? A person wants to learn Torah, and he's got a family to take care of. Mitzvah from the Bible, mitzvah from the Bible. Responsibility for your family, responsibility to learn Torah. Both of them are equal in the level of impor importance in the scripts, in the verses. Same thing. You must do this, you must do that. Now you have to choose. In reality, under the limitation of time, you must choose. You have only those hours to learn, but the family needs you. How are you going to choose? You don't know. So that answer can solve and help us in many, many aspects of our, our life. Work-wise, family, peace in the house, career, mm, subjects of learning, in what should I focus, what should I put my mind into, which state to live in, where should I go, what should I do, with which soulmate, who I'm going to marry, that one or that one, many options. How are you going to know? You cannot know with your eyes. You cannot tell with your ears. You cannot count on other people, even the greatest ones of them all. It's very, very hard to know for sure that what the day going to tell you to do going to work for you in your life. You can go and consult with rabbis, with famous people, with known people, with giants, and to find yourself stuck and drowning in the swamps of despair and sadness and confusions, and you're totally lost without a real advice. What a person should do. So now the answer for that is, that you cannot know with the tools that you have that are checking and feeling the external, the outside world. The only tool that you have is your inner senses, your own emotions. So now, okay, how I'm gonna know if I'm trying to find out with myself, inside of myself, what is the right path, how can I know I have a good feeling about that job and now I heard about that job and I also have a good feeling about that so I don't know what to choose. So my feelings, how I'm gonna know about my feelings, again you cannot know even through your feelings. So what is this crazy person is telling us? This crazy person is telling you that you need to listen to yourself, not to your emotions. You need to listen 
to who that you are in that situation. And if you're going to find yourself that you are trying to do the best that you can, if you, when you're checking yourself after all the calculations and all the thoughts, you found yourself that you, in your own eyes, you're doing the best that you can, your will, your inner desire is aimed to the good, to a successful move, to do something great, useful, successful. So you must understand that Hashem, the creator of the world, He will be there with you. Not that you can find the path of Hashem. You can never find the path of Hashem. You can only find your path. You can only find your way. You should find yourself being more and more righteous and loyal and nice and kind and caring and with patience and trying to be more sensitive and more open-minded and trying to listen more. And if you find yourself that you are that person, so you should know for sure that Hashem is with you. You cannot climb to heaven with the power of your mind, with the power of your prayer, with the pure intention of your heart, you can bring heaven to earth. And that's the right path. That's when you are walking with Hashem. With who Hashem is with? With the righteous ones. With the ones that holds impurity. That their mindset is good. That their will and their desire is honest and beautiful and great and generous. And they're willing to do more and to sacrifice and to be good and righteous. They're truthful. They're loyal. So the Creator is with them. How are you going to know that your path is the right path? When you will check yourself, who am I when I'm taking those decisions? Who am I when I am doing the best that I can? If now I have those situations and I need to choose, I need mainly to work on myself that I will choose out of my qualities, out of my good character, from my amazing treasures that are treasured inside of me, from my good spirit, from my soul. And if I'm choosing from those brave places in my soul, in my spirit, so I should be sure and confident that Hashem is with me. And then you don't need to worry. And then you don't need to be scared. And even if they're going to fire you after two weeks, you're not allowed to chase yourself and blame yourself. Oh, I should have taken that job. Oh, look, the other person that took that job, he's over there and he's working and forever he's working over there. You don't know what Hashem is planning for you. When you're following Hashem, Hashem is your guide. Hashem is the one that will take you from one station to the next. And you cannot tell because you're walking in the path of emunah, of faith. And the faith is in the nights. The verse is saying, Your faith means the faith in the Creator is walking in the darkness. It's to walk into the unknown while counting and putting your confidence on the loving Creator. But for Him to be with you, it depends in the purity of your heart, in your good attributes, in your good actions, that they are coming out of your good will, out of the intention of your heart. And this is why I can recommend you, for you, to listen to my classes. That's the reason. Why? Because I know that I'm doing the best that I can. I'm checking myself on daily basis. I'm cutting myself to shreds, to the tiniest pieces that I can in my life to check if my intention is good or not. 
And that's why I can tell you now for sure and to promise to you that if you're gonna listen to my classes, it will never gonna take you to bad places because I'm 100% counting on Hashem that He is with me when I'm blessing you, when I'm guiding you, when I'm giving to you that advice because I'm giving to myself the same advice that I'm giving to you. And how can I know that it's gonna work for you? Because I know that Hashem put that idea into my heart that I'm going to go and teach the wisdom that He taught me and that that is the mission of my life and that I need to count on Him that if really that is the mission of my life and He's shown to me results. He's shown to me that advice that I gave to people worked for them and saved their lives and made amazing changes in their lives. People that for years were not keeping Shabbat and were so far from Judaism and they woke up completely. There was a woman that ran out from her religious, a religious house. She was a, a religious woman, Jewish religious woman. And she ran out of her house in Israel when she was a child. And she sent us a message a few months ago that after hearing my class she and her life being changed by that, she, and then she wrote a long email explanation on what happened with her. And she said that she ran out from, ran away from her house, from her parents' house in a very young age and moved alone to the States, to the United States. And over here, she, went off the way of religion completely. Didn't keep Shabbat and she didn't use her Jewish name at all and was not eating kosher. And she also got married with a non-Jew and everything was off the path of Judaism. And after something like 30 years of her life as secular, as an um, Atheist, atheist, I say that in English. Atheist, atheist, living her life like that for 30 years with no faith, with no connection to Hashem, maybe with some inner hidden faith, but not religious at all. She found my videos on YouTube and she started listening to them and they took her life to the path of keeping all Torah and mitzvot, all the Jewish rules out of happiness, out of understanding that she wants to do it. And she found the Creator, Hashem, in her life again, only because that my message was healing for her, was good for her. Why? Because I really want to help. Because that's my will. And that's why Hashem chose me and gave me that ability and the green light to go and to break into the rooms of your hearts and to make changes over there. If I would be wicked, if I would be evil, Hashem wouldn't give, wouldn't give, me, wouldn't give me that access into your hearts. Because He's taking care of your hearts. He's protecting you. He doesn't want no one to hurt you. So if He's opening your hearts to listen to someone, it's because that He wants you to be healed. He wants you to succeed and to grow. Now that's why I can recommend you to listen to my advice. Because I know that I'm checking myself so much. I know that I'm checking myself because I don't want, I won't be able to deal with a disappointment of me from myself if I'm gonna think that I did something wrong to someone. I cannot stand that. If I hurt someone's feeling, you can never imagine what happens to me inside. I can stand awake and to cry for Hashem for days. I cannot go to sleep. I am losing my appetite. I'm not able to sleep, not to drink, not to eat, not to function, can't focus in anything. And I'm texting and I'm calling and I'm doing whatever it takes, even if it means to turn the world upside down, I know I'm going to do that. Every promise that I gave to a person, I'm still praying for those people. I have a long list of obligations, of things that I took upon myself. And I am keep on praying on all of those people. And I know those things about myself. That's why I know that I can give you an advice that's going to work for you. 
because I know that Hashem, he gonna keep the will of those righteous ones that are willing to keep His will. Because when you are forcing your will to become like the will of the Creator, the Creator gonna transfer all the world, gonna change everything just to keep your will. Because you bent yourself to His way, so He gonna make your way straight and successful. Now based on that, I can give you that advice that is coming from the experience of my life about the will, about the inner desire to achieve certain things in life. And we know that that huge righteous man, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said, En yeush ba'olam klal. There is no despair in the world at all. The simple meaning of those words is that if you're not gonna give up on your holy desires, you will receive them. They will be answered. They will take place in your life if you just not gonna back off. So, me, in my life, I saw results to those things. I saw that the inner investigation of me finding and looking for the truth, searching for the inner truth, brought me to such high places, to such amazing awareness, to such an amazing ability to sense and to feel and to understand on certain topics that were so far away from me. And I also never been taught on those subjects. Just I was investigating inside of myself and I realized how strong and powerful is the power of will, the power of your will to keep on wanting something and to decide I am not backing off no matter what. Even if I'm gonna die, even if I'm gonna be tortured, even if I'm gonna suffer and gonna scream my guts out, I'm not gonna give up on my will, on my desire. When you want like that, you're gonna see wonders in your prayers, even if you prayed only one minute on that topic. As corresponding to the power of your will, that's how your prayers will be answered. And if you see, like the verse is saying, it's written in the Gemara, an explanation to that verse. If a person, the verse is saying you should hope to Hashem, and if you see that you haven't been answered, you need to keep on hoping for Hashem. Great. There is an explanation in the Gemara to that verse that if a person finding himself that he is praying and asking, hoping for a salvation on a certain topic, and he sees that he is not receiving that thing. So the verse is encouraging you, strengthening you to know that the solution is only to keep on praying on the same thing. Keep on extending and strengthening your own will, convincing yourself that you will be answered, that your prayers are meaningful and powerful. And it's written also that that righteous man, Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa, Amar Rabbi Hanin, Rabbi Hanin said that he heard that Amar that said Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa, that Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa said that we know that thing from heaven. We heard that voice from heaven and that voice told us to all the righteous people of that generation, said Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa, that if a person is praying long prayers, lengthening his prayers, for sure it's a guarantee from heaven that his prayers will be answered. We saw that thing about Moshe Rabbeinu. He went up on Mount Sinai, climbed up to heaven, and went to scream to Hashem. 
and he prayed for 40 days and 40 nights and after 40 days and 40 nights he been answered he been answered in a voice from heaven the voice of the creator that told him i will forgive them i forgive them as you asked me to exactly in the way that you asked me to forgive them that's how i'm gonna forgive them not only that i'm not gonna kill them not only that i'm gonna rescue them not only that i'm gonna redeem them not only that also that it's gonna be in the way that you asked me to do it i'm following you now and the Gemara is also explaining another verse. And that verse is saying to us, Tzadik Moshe Lirat Elohim, that the righteous man, he leads the Creator, that Hashem, he is following the righteous one, like we said before, that when you're bending, forcing your will to the will of the Creator, the Creator will make the will of the world surrender to your holy desire, to your inner will, to bring salvation that will fit to your mindset. Who is that righteous one? The verse is saying, kulam tzadikim, And your people are all righteous. Now what's your problem? that you don't believe in the Bible, that you don't believe in the righteous ones, and you don't believe in what that is written on you. You don't believe that you are righteous. That's your tough luck. That's your problem. That you think that you are evil, that you are weak, that you are failing on daily basis, that you messed up, that you cannot wake up in the morning, and that you're not davening right, and that you're not learning enough, and you are following the filthy mouth of the damned evil snake that is lying and snitching and telling and rebuking and destroying and humiliating you and erasing your true self by ruining your self-esteem and destroying your inner appreciation that is built inside of you. Built in inside of you an inner appreciation. I'm going to ask you for an example. There are people that cannot stand their look. When they're looking at themselves in pictures or in the mirror, they hate their faces. But I'm asking you, even those people that have been destroyed so much by the evil inclination, don't they also once in a while have that moment that they're looking at themselves again and they feel okay and good with how that they look and they're saying i look good tonight you're gonna look at him or at her and you're gonna say he's ugly she's ugly she also in a different day gonna look at herself and gonna say oh i'm ugly oh i'm so disgusting whatever okay but once in a while can't you find that moment that through that dark cloud of your foreign thoughts about yourself, through that cloud of your destroyed and ruined self-esteem, that through that darkness you will see a spark of beauty in your face? It happened to all of us. It means that you inside of yourself, carrying, holding your inner beauty. And maybe 99.9% .9 of the time you're not aware to that amazing treasure of your inner beauty. And you're choosing to follow the negative thoughts that are describing beauty in a 100% different way than how that you look. But it's only because that you're following the advice of an evil inclination, of a spiritual snake, devil, that is whispering to you voices that are destroying your self-esteem. And all of his sentences and whispers are 100% lies. He's not telling you the truth. 
maybe you have the 100% similar portrait like Sarah, our mother, Sarah Imenu. Do you know how Sarah, the wife of Abram, she looked like? Maybe she looked exactly like you, 100% like you, maybe. Two drops of water similar to you. Maybe you have the face of Jacob, our father, or Yosef, the righteous man, his child, maybe, and you don't know. Do you know how, what was the shape of the face of Moses, of David, of Yeshua Binun? Do you know? Do you have a clue what was the face, how the face of Esther, the queen, looked like, of Mordechai Yehudi? Do you know? Maybe you have the exact face like Yael Eshet Hever Akini, like Yehudit that brought a redemption and salvation to all of our nation. Do you know? You don't have a clue. So why are you judging yourself? If you would hear that you were walking for 80, 90 years with the shape of Rachel Imenu, of Leah, of Sarah, of Rivka, of the holiest mothers, would you hate your look? Or that you would go like a peacock, so happy and proud in the streets, knowing that secret, that you look exactly like our holy mother Sarah. Ah, fantastic. But you are only, f I, I don't know, in, in feet. Uh, 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 what, 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 this height in feet? I know in meters, one meter and 60 and 50 and 40. I know in feet, how, 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 what's, how, how short is it? In five, feet. five feet, okay, five feet tall. You hate yourself, but maybe Sarah, our holy mother, she was also five feet tall, maybe. You don't know. You don't know what was the height of Abraham, of Jacob, of Isaac. You don't know anything. What you do know, that you're ugly. Why? You don't know who you are. You don't really know the shape of your face. You don't really understand the wisdom of face, of portraits of people, to know really that you should criticize yourself on your nose, on your eyebrows, on the color of your eyes, on your ears, on your hair, on your beard, on your chin, on your whatever, forehead. Nonsense. Nonsense. A friend sent me a text long time ago. He wrote over there, he said, I'm not fat. I have fat. I also have fingernails, but I'm not a fingernail. So maybe you have fat. Maybe you gained some weight. It doesn't mean anything bad about you. Just your evil inclination is using it to destroy your self-esteem. But the truth is that even if he conquered 99.9 .9 success, destroyed you almost completely, and you're about to kill yourself because you hate yourself so much, if you're still alive, means that the spark of holiness still lives inside of you. And if you're going to focus in that spark, and you're going to nurture and protect that spark, it's going to flame. It's going to expand and going to glow and going to shine your being in a way that people that will look at you will be blinded from the beauty and the light that will shine out from your portrait, from your face. And you won't even know that. And you're not going to be aware to that. One time a person sent to us an email to the Amuna Project. He sent an email. He said, every time that I'm watching Rav Dror's classes, I see thunders, lightnings coming out of his face. Great. For me, it's an illusion. I'm looking. When I'm watching and seeing my videos on Facebook, on YouTube, I can't see anything. I see that silly friend of mine standing and talking and preaching and whatever, mm, waving his mm, butterfly hands all over the place. Great! I don't see those lightnings. I assume to myself that all of you, at least the ones that are not on medications or on LSD during my classes, are not seeing those lightnings, so okay. Why that person said that he sees it? Because he does. He was not lying. So I asked myself, if he really sees those things, Hashem decided 
to show those lightnings to him. Now, I'm not aware, I don't know what happens, but when it's written between righteous people in ancient books that been written 1000 years ago, that when that righteous one was talking, flames of fire would come out of his mouth. I'm asking you, in that class that that amazing sight been described, are you trying to tell me that all of the 300 people, 200 people, 70 people that were sitting in that class, all of them saw those flames of fire? No. 100% the answer is no. Everyone were fascinated. Everyone were amazed. Everyone were happy. It was a fantastic class that they will remember for the rest of their lives. But they were not all able to see those flames of fire that were coming out from the holiest mouth of that righteous one. Only that unique rabbi that his mind was anyway in heaven, climbing up and down in Jacob letter, seeing the combinations of letters in every book that he's opening and seeing the souls of all of the people that he's coming in touch every day. He, when he sat in that class, he saw those flaming fire coming out of the mouth of that righteous one. So now the fact that we cannot see it doesn't mean that it's not happening. Also to me right now, we don't know, I don't know, you don't know. I'm asking you, do you know about yourselves? About me, I don't know. About you, do you know? When you are talking <laughs> clever words, when you have a holy desire, when you want something good, do you really know how much it waits? What's the real um, importance of your good desire, of your holy hope? Do you know? I have a friend that he had a clinical death in a car accident and he saw amazing things that he remembers some of them he came back to this world after something like three days of being somewhere else and he saw many righteous people and he had many experiences over there one of them was in the beginning of his journey up to heaven right after the car accident that he was climbing in a certain darkness and suddenly he saw a huge light. There was a righteous man that was leading him through that darkness, climbing in the wall, in the worlds, in the levels of the floors of the worlds until he came to a certain place in heaven that he'd been judged over there in heaven court. And while he was in that journey, crossing that darkness, suddenly a huge light came down from the bottom, from underneath, from where that he came from a few minutes ago, and passed him and that righteous one that was guiding him in that darkness. So he, when he saw that huge light, he saw that when that light was close to them, he saw with his eyes, suddenly all of the darkness that was surrounding them, was illuminating, was shining because of the light of that huge illuminating thing that was rising. And he, from that darkness, suddenly he saw that that darkness was built by thousands of souls that were lying in darkness. And when that huge light came up, all of those souls woke up to life. And they all desired that light. And when that light disappeared, went up further and further, all those souls came back down to their darkness and to their deep sleep. So he, that friend of mine, in his vision, he asked his <coughs> friend, what was that light? That righteous man that was helping him to climb through that darkness. And he asked him, what was that light? So he told him, he answered him, that was a thought of a person that was thinking to himself, maybe that he wanted to keep a mitzvah, to do something good. 
That was a will of a person to keep mitzvah. We never saw a mitzvah in our life. Now, we just described the power of a will to keep mitzvah. To keep mitzvah, it's to do something good. It's to do a favor to your friend. It's to be nice to someone. It doesn't have to keep, shab be to keep Shabbat or to eat kosher or all the religious stuff. It can be also not to lie or just to be honest or to be nice, to be kind, to be friendly. It's a mitzvah. The way of the land is coming before the Torah. The manners, the way of behavior, to be polite, to be nice, to be kind. Those are the foundations, that's the basic rules that based on them you can start keeping Torah and mitzvot. But before that you know how to behave, that you're nice, that you're caring, that you're sensitive, that you have patience, that you, that you love, that you feel, that you're human. You're not an animal with a beard and, and side curls running in the streets making sure to have matzot for Pesach. As long as you're not just crazy, so great. You can also keep the Torah Mitzvot and everything is wonderful. As long as you're not killing people on your way to be holy. That's not the way to climb. So now the will is something, something so powerful. And me, in my journeys, in my life, I saw that to keep on wanting it's true that sometimes when you want to achieve something, it's take a long, t long time until you achieve it. Like we said, he is trapped now in prison for five years. What are he going to do? He can want. And that will will give him the power for life. It will give him a reason and a purpose to live in, even in, in, in times that the salvation is not taking place immediately in your life. Even if certain things in your life still need some kind of, of preparation, more, more tuning, more, more, more work until they will take place in your life as well, even though you don't need to give up. And the fact that you will keep on having the will will give satisfaction and joy and inner power and inspiration to your life to keep on marching in that path that you desire. Because when you're separating yourself from the will, from your inner desire to accomplish certain things, you're falling to sadness. You're losing your identity. You're losing yourself. You are who that you want to become. You are that person that you dream to be. You are that one that is still knocking from the back of your mind and trying to remind you again and again, hey, I want to do this, but I want to do that. And I want to achieve this, and I want to achieve that. You are your dreams. You are your hopes. You are your holy desire. That's who that you are. You are your will. The Creator, He opens His white hands and He gives to everyone the answers, the salvations that they need corresponding to their will. He will answer your will. So you need to keep on working on your will to want it to express it, not to give up on it, to write it down for yourself, to dedicate minutes of prayers on every subject, on every dream, and not to back off, and not to criticize yourself on your dreams. Because you can never know the importance and the greatness of your holy dreams and desires. You don't know how powerful you are. You don't know the greatness, the great results that will take place in the life of your beloved ones when they will see that you achieved your goals. When your prayers will be answered, it will affect the ones that are surrounding you and they will learn from you. They will be inspired from your success. 
And you should carry that goodwill, that inner beauty that you have inside of yourself, not in a hidden place anymore. You must be proud of yourself. You must go and be proud of who that Hashem made you to be. And to stop criticizing yourself based on foreign people's opinions or on foreign opinions of your mind that been twisted and bent by the evil inclination. Listening to other people's opinions. Hatred is something that the person is buying in his life. It's something that the person is being educated to hate. You don't hate naturally. If you're going to take a Muslim child and a, and a Jewish child, you're going to put them in the same place. You're going to take a Palestinian child and a Jewish from Jerusalem child. You're going to make them grow together in the same house. They're going to love each other as brothers. They're going to be ready to sacrifice their lives for each other. Nothing in the world going to make them enemies ever until you're going to start poisoning their minds with filthy words of hatred, of negativity. Also, you hate yourself. Also, you are sad and upset and disappointed from yourself because someone was poisoning your mind. Someone was impuring your thoughts. Negativity, sadness, all kinds of foreign thoughts that penetrated into your mind, to your awareness, brought that darkness, that very thick cloud that is separating you from your true self. Kill it. Fight against your negativity. Hate it. Sacrifice yourself to fight against your sadness, against your despair, against your low self-esteem. Come back to who that you really are. Come back to be seven years old, innocent, playing in the backyard. Come back to age three, desiring to go up on that swing. Be a simple person. Come back to your true self. Ask yourself, what in the world I really want to do with my life? Set a goal and do whatever it takes until you're gonna achieve it. And don't back off. Never, ever, even if it's the hardest thing of them all. You know what I took upon myself? I took upon myself to bring redemption. That's what I took upon myself. I will not gonna move one inch one breath of a hair from wanting the complete redemption that the Creator will reveal His loving kindness on all of us until no one will be left behind. Like the verse is saying, Shelo yidach mimeno nidach, that there will be no one left behind. No one. That is the goal that I set for myself. Now, that's the reason why Hashem made me tall, because I need to put high goals. So He made me tall, that I will aim to the heights. And you need people with a vision to bring down salvations to this world. If you don't have a vision, if you don't have holy desires, you cannot bring salvations. If you don't have a dream, how are you going to bring, how your dreams going to come true? How are you going to bring down light to this world if you're not desiring holy things, good things? Moshe Rabbeinu was praying for 60 years in the desert, all alone. 
separated from his nation, from his mother, from his father, from his brothers, separated from all of his people, in that knowing that they are being tortured and executed and dying and being slavered and being thrown to the Nile to be eaten by crocodiles, tortured and raped and destroyed by cruel, cruel people, the Egyptians of 3,000 and something years ago. And for 60 years, he was going every morning to the desert of Sinai and he was calling and asking and begging and praying and screaming and hoping and yearning and doing everything that was in his power to bring redemption to his nation, to his beloved ones. After 60 years, Hashem called him into a cave that was hidden in the bottom of Mount Sinai. <clears throat> and when he went into that cave, running after a small deer that ran out of his um, flock, he saw the burning bush. And the Creator revealed himself to him in the first time in his life. He was 80 years old. After 20 years, he ran out from Egypt to the desert, and for 60 years, he was calling Hashem. After 80 years of his life, Hashem answered his prayer. I know Hashem going to answer me much earlier. I don't have the power of Moses to hold on for 60 years screaming. That's not my journey. And you need to believe in yourselves to know that Hashem is willing to answer to your prayers and to deliver <coughs> what that you want to be delivered. He's willing to do that, but you need to force yourself to straight up yourselves to come back to who that you are. If you are not yourself, you won't be there to receive the check, to receive the salvation. You must be yourself to claim what that is yours. If someone will ask you, who are you? And you're going to say, I'm doctor, I don't know what. You're still not yourself. You have a name. You have a being. You have an essence. You are your will. You are who that you are. You're not your titles or the honor that you're receiving from people. You're not opinions of other people about you. You are your identity. You are only who that you really are. And you will never going to be someone else. So what now, when you want your dreams to come true, you need to dream those dreams. You need to be a dreamer. You need to hope. You need to desire. You need to live. And that desire for life will bring you to your salvations, to your redemptions, to find those diamonds that the Creator planted in this world. You don't know how many wonders are waiting for us underground. You don't know. You don't know the amounts of diamonds and golden parts that you can find if you're going to dig. Spiritual and physicals. You don't know how many pearls are hidden in the sea. You don't know how many diamonds. You don't know how many rubies. How many good stones. You don't know. You don't know this world is a treasure box. And it's locked. It's hidden. It's all treasured. It's all locked. It's in a safe. It's saved for you. When we will be redeemed. When we will be redeemed. The treasure will open. The sea will bring out all the gold, all the pearls, all the necklaces, every single kind of beauty and qualities that this world knows how to, to, to make will be delivered to us by nature, by angels, 
all the perfumes, all the smells of all the flowers, all the colors and all the sounds, all the songs of all the animals, of all the birds, everything will sing along with us. We need to tune ourselves to that path to understand that you are not ugly. You are who that Hashem made you to be. So be yourself. You're not stupid. You have the wisdom that Hashem installed inside of you. You're not lazy. You're holding the powers that Hashem gave you. You're not weak. You're not exhausted. You're not forgetting things. Hashem doesn't let you see. Hashem doesn't open that door for you yet. Hashem, Hashem, Hashem. Believe. And there's a reason for your sorrow. There's a reason for your poverty. There's a reason for your weakness, for your hunger, for those horrible deaths, for the arguments, for the fights, for the shames and insultings. There's a lesson. Tune yourself to the truth. Why? Ask why. Ask Hashem what. What is the message? Ask for it and you will be answered. You should want to know and then you will know. If you gave up, you will never gonna know. A person will die ignorant without knowing who that he was, how many treasures were waiting for him in his path because he was too scared to search and to look for it. I know I have that problem. I'm working on it. I can speak for days like that and I'm the only one that can stop me. So I'm going to stop me now. Thank you very much. I appreciate your kindness, your patience. Thank you. I need that stage, I need that place to, to express myself, so thank you for listening. May Hashem bless you. Emuna Project Inc. is a non-profit organization. We're asking you please to support us, to help us, to help those souls that are yearning, that are desiring to wake up and to go out from their life crisis, to come back to the light. Help us to help them and Hashem will bless you by the merit of your generosity to answer all your prayers and requests. Amen. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.